Okay, I'd just like to say hi, I'm Emily. My co-writer for this was Ness. She can't be here, unfortunately, today. She couldn't get the time off work, unlike my bosses, who are nice. So, so the aim of our project was to determine whether HGPs are actually an economical feasible option in backgrounding steers and a pasture-based system located down here in the Riverina. Um, it's important for me to say just quickly what an HGP is. There's different types. There's oestrogens, there's androgens and there's progesterones. We used oestrogen within our trial, which is known as Computose 100. Um, it contains oestradiol 17 beta. Just before we start anything, it's, it's just a massive consumer miseducation, unfortunately, with HGP use. If you eat one egg at the one sitting, you have to eat 77 kilos of beef to get the same amount of HGP, so oestradiol 17 beta, compared to an egg. So the amount that actually is in the end product is quite minimal. All right, so just a little bit of a background on our property. So it was located down here, it was 650 hectares. Um, it was a generational place and it was located down here so it was summer rainfall. So what they did, they had no breeders, they were just purely and simply backgrounders and they sourced their cattle from between 8 to 11 months or 230 to 300 kilos. They had a preference for the black cattle and they, stole, they sold their steers um, depending on age or weight, just seeing what came first. Now it's important to note that they were only aiming for the feedlot market. I know that if you do use HGPs it does close your options into the EU um, and coals problems with that but they, they were not wanting to do that whatsoever so it wasn't an option or a problem for them. So the block that actually they had a mixed enterprise they also did a horse adjustment so it wasn't a major part of their business there was a mixed enterprise on the farm and they just like cattle for the lifestyle so that's a big thing that we had to take on board that they did actually want to do cattle there other, were other options on their place that they could have done and made more profit but they wanted to have cattle there just for the sake of having the cattle. Um, so the pastures were improved and not improved and they did do fertilizers but they were just all done as required. So this is where the cattle were backgrounded. Um, it's important to note on the bottom that the one of the paddocks is actually a river flat which actually became to be a pretty important factor during our study. So the goals of their business was to maintain a profit without taking too many risks. The farmer didn't want to take at risk outside and not make any, any money at all, but the son who was the one who was wanting to take over was really open-minded and was even wanting to get into the fat lamb. So the reason he did it was just to prove Dad that we can do this and it will work. So obviously for the experiment we just had two hypotheses. One, will the HGP cattle will make a greater weight gain compared to the ones that don't. Now it is proven that they do show that steers on pasture-based systems before we did the study did have a weight gain expected benefit of 0.3 to 0.5 kilos per head. So the way we ran the trial, we randomly selected cattle that they already had on the place by pulling their tag number out of a hat and we allocated them to two different groups and then we implanted half and then we other, the other half we left as the control. They were exposed to the exact same environmental conditions throughout the whole period and we wanted to weigh them every three weeks but that wasn't feasible for them obviously because they had a life and so we weighed it as they did and they just sent us the data back and we did a statistical analysis. So the trial went for 117 days, like I said it had to go for that long because it was Computose 100 and we wanted to follow it throughout the length of the trial. I guess the main take home point was that yes the HGP cattle did grow at a quicker rate um, with a mean wean weight gain up there like it says of 114.8 kilos per head where the mean the control was just 99.1 kilos per head. So the average daily weight gain was a, a kilo for the HGP compared to the 0.8 of the other ones. This is just a table to outline the stats that we had to do on the place. It's probably a pretty boring slide, but what it says is that first, the results in the first page was there was no statistical difference between the two groups, which is good. That's what you want to see to make sure that you, have, you are running the study properly. Um, if there was a statistical difference between the weights initially, then the study might have been a little bit skewed. So this is a graph of what actually occurred and their weight gains. Obviously the computos are the green and the control is the pink. Um, so as it shows, computos does work and it did work in this place in, in the summer period, which is when the trial was run. Um, and it has shown that, that, that computos actually increases growth rate by 10 to 30 percent, feed efficiency by 5 to 15 percent, but it does reduce carcass fat by around 5 to 6 percent. 
Um, the interesting <coughs> thing to note was cattle did spend 85% of their time on 60% lucerne and 40% Polaris, but due to the Wagga floods, which was actually in this time where they were on the river flat, was they had to be moved to 90% lucerne and then 10% clovers, and then they went to 90% or 60% lucerne to 40% native pastures. Now we did have to hypothesise why they did lose weight in this sector. Obviously, I don't know what the conditions of the paddock were, but apparently they were on the river flat, so they, cattle literally couldn't eat. They were underwater when they had to move. The stress of moving them to new paddocks might have also decreased their weight gain. Another thing to also think about is, although that lucerne does have a really, really high nutritional value, it's not as good as grasses, and on grasses you can actually gain a kilo a head, where lucerne you gain 0.8. The reason being that the reason lucerne has really high nitrogen levels, but it's not as high in energy, and you need the energy to break down the nitrogen, so you can't gain as much weight as you can because they haven't got as much sugars. Though another reason is those high sugars make the feed more palatable. Lucerne's quite bitter. So when you've moved them from a place where they've had grass and they can actually show their selective grazing preferences to where they have to go and have to eat what they maybe don't like as much, it might take them a few days before they actually kickstart into what they need to do. Um, so that, that's what we were sort of thinking at that stage. And it was good that they responded back after they moved them. Um, this, this slide was a little interesting reason being that I guess this is the part we want to look at because one of the problems with or one of the things that people want to know is if, if they are in a times of maintenance or if the cattle are losing weight, do HGP cattle lose more weight because they do have a higher metabolism rate and it's actually proven in studies that they don't, they don't lose, they're not meant to lose more weight than the un, un, untreated cattle. Um, so we can't actually explain why this occurred um, so and it was good to see that they came back firing towards the end and were above but we don't know why um, the way HGPs do work is the estrogen that well, the one in this one stimulates the growth hormone axis within the body which increases the metabolic rate um, and then you put more energy towards protein synthesis and you do decrease your fat content within the carcass. The interesting thing with your fat content with the oestrogens, at full maturity your fat content in intramuscular fat is actually the same as a non-treated cow but that's when the cow reaches full maturity and we're often not selling them when they're at the full maturity, we're selling them prior to this. Um, but they were selling directly to the feedlots. It is important that yes, you can be MSA graded with these these type of cuts, and they sometimes are downgraded. But if you use tender stretch techniques or cryovac packing, that can actually make you even step up a grade. So there are things that you can do post slaughter that can actually affect the tenderness and the cuts. So this one once again was just proof in the pudding that over the average daily gain they did they did increase, which was good. So what we recommended for them at this stage was to employ the HGPs. Now HGPs work, as that previous slide showed, when you want to have good quality and good quantity of pasture and that's when they're going to show their best results. Um, they, don't, they don't gain any benefit if, if you're in losing weight condition, they won't lose less weight than the others. So if you want to get the most economics out of them, you need to use them at a time when you guys have the best pasture on your place. Um, so. For them, the economical options were, there was, depending if they wanted to sell, when they wanted and how they wanted to sell. So this is the assumption. There were 135 days on farm before we came into the trial. We ran the trial, which split the groups into two. Um, if you finish them out to the 520 kilos, the Computos cattle were there obviously 33 days compared to the 60 days added of the unimplanted control. So I won't go into the maths because it was quite an in-depth little thing. But the first option, like they said, involves selling them after a certain amount of time. So if that's after a certain amount of time, the only benefit you're going to get is in the average daily gain of kilograms of beef per head of what you're turning off because it's done over a time. Where if you're doing it when they reach a certain weight, obviously you're going to save days on your place. You do have to take into account because they are heavier, they do eat more. Now that's the only difference. They don't feed, speed up the metabolism, so someone my weight would eat more than me because they've got a compu dose because their metabolism runs faster. That's not the fact. A, a, a big man will eat more at dinner than mine. Well, it's an excuse why my boyfriend picks off the, my plate anyway. Um, so. That's, that's where we're at. So then when they reach the 520, you get, you get the benefit from the days you save. Um, but the only benefit is if you reuse that pasture or do something with that land that you have 
will turn them off quicker. So you're not going to get a benefit if you get rid of them and then you do nothing. So the only option was to restock for them, which they could do, which they just went through the yards. Um, the other option was if they actually wanted to cut and sell the place and get some loose and hay, which was really lucrative at that time. That was the prices at the time. Now, I do understand it doesn't suit everybody. I rang around the feedlots at that time to see if they did not like taking cattle that had Computose previously, and there was no price discrimination within the market at that stage. So there was no reason that they didn't want to take the cattle, and that's just what it was then. But I'd strongly recommend you doing it before researching and finding out where, where that cattle can go and if there is price discriminations. Um, so what we recommended, we, farming is holistic, this is not just a quick fix but it is something to improve their output. They needed to have better record keeping because it was a bit of a debacle for us making sure. Electronic records would have made the whole thing a lot easier. Um, and we also recommended to do another HGP trial because like I said it does affect that the, the pasture quality is the main driver of the whole, the whole thing. So you want to do it at different times of year to see if it is profitable year round. Um, and as far as you'd know which ones are your most profitable pastures to put your cattle on to finish them. Another thing to make sure that you know that is you want to, that the payout period, you want to sell the cattle soon after the payout period. So if you use a Computose 100, you want to get rid of them of 100 plus 150 days. You have to make sure that they have gone through the whole 100 because feedlots won't take them if you haven't used the payout period time. But you need to finish it and then it's best to get them off your place as soon as possible. Reason being that their weight gain benefits can decrease and that's another cost that you guys probably won't want on there. So what we'd recommend for the farmers to do the next time is another problem was they're actually selling the cattle as they got to a certain weight through the yards um, which they had to do because it was a running farm that's part of the side effects that you get. So ideally we would have liked to keep every single sample size throughout the whole experiment but that wasn't the case so we recommended them for doing it again. Um, consistent weighings was another big one just so you could graph and do statistical analysis a little bit better. Um, and then they need to make sure they fix their scales, which they did do because that took a long time.